and we talked about <clears throat> a few things about inheritance. Um, namely how inheritance is an example of what we described as an ISA relationship. So if we say that subclass is a example of a superclass, that's a relationship. For example, a dog is a animal. So therefore, we can have an inheritance and say that dog inherits from animal. We can say that a, um, a international student is a student. So we could have international student inherit from student. Um, did we go through an example of this? We didn't cover inheritance. We didn't cover inheritance. I just broke the pen. I'm so, I'm so surprised. Um, okay, I, I, I'm mistaken. So we did not cover inheritance. So let's cover inheritance now. All right. In object-oriented technology, uh, there are relationships between different objects. All right. Uh, one of them, one of the relationships we've already discovered, I don't think we gave a name to it, but it is called composition. In other words, when several objects, when an object is part of another object, you can call that composition. For example, a pizza order, an order for pizza, is really comprised of just a bunch of pizzas. That's what a pizza order is. So that would be an example of composition. A pizza order is composed of a bunch of pizzas. That's called composition. So whenever you have sort of objects defined as attributes of other objects, you sort of have composition going on. Another way to say it would be like an automobile. An automobile is comprised of a steering wheel, tires, an engine, a battery, an exhaust system, and so on. Another way to say that is those things compose an automobile. They make up an automobile. So that's one way that objects can be related to each other. When one is comprised of or composed of members of other objects. So if we were writing a, a class for automobile, if we were doing a good job with it, we would have an automobile class and there would be a engine class that was part of the automobile class. And there would be a brake system which is part of the automobile class. And there'd be a steering system which is part of the automobile class and so on. So the automobile would be made up or composed of several members of uh, other classes, other objects. A, that's, that's one way that objects can be related to each other. Another way is through what is called inheritance. Okay? Inheritance. Inheritance, another way of saying inheritance is specialization. When you have one thing that is a more special version of the other thing, you have what's called inheritance. So, let's go over the examples I went over. Animal. A dog is a certain kind or a special kind of animal, right? A dog's still an animal, but it's not every animal is a certain kind of animal. A international student is a student, but they're a special kind of student. They're a specialized kind of student. So whenever you have a case like that, that's called sometimes specialization and other times it's called inheritance. So let's get some terminology down and let's look at how we diagram that if we sketch it out. One of the things that we'll talk about probably on Wednesday are what are called class diagrams. A class diagram is sort of a chart that you use when you're sort of planning out how an application is going to look like. So we're going to like maybe draw parts of it now and then we'll go over in more detail later on. On a class diagram, it would look something like this. You have what's called the superclass. And then you have the subclass. And you draw an arrow from the subclass to the superclass. 
That's how you indicate on a class diagram inheritance. So this is an example of inheritance. Okay. Now, one thing we can say is subclass is a example of the superclass. Another thing we can say is a subclass is a specialized version of the superclass. There's what is called the ISA test, I-S space A. If you can say this is a that, then you have inheritance or specialization. We could say the reverse that a sub or I'm sorry, the superclass is I can't write is a generalized version of subclass. So let's go through, I'll, go, I'll name a couple of things and you tell me what the subclass is and what the superclass is. Or none of the above is not an example of inheritance. Bird and eagle. What is a subclass? What is a su what is a superclass? What is a subclass? Bird is a superclass. Bird's a superclass, and what's the subclass? Eagle. Eagle. Okay. Steering wheel and automobile. Okay. Does anyone have a different answer? Yes. That would be none of the above. That would be composition. Because an automobile is not a steering wheel. And a steering wheel is not an automobile. A steering wheel is part of an automobile. So when you say is a part of, that's composition. OK. Um, student, graduate student, which is a superclass, which is the subclass. Student is a superclass. Graduate student is the subclass. Um, um, let me. Um, student, faculty member. None of the above. A student is not necessarily a faculty member, and a faculty member is not necessarily a student. What about a, what about a professor, an adjunct professor, and a professor? Which is a superclass, which is a subclass? Superclass. Professor is a superclass. Adjunct professor is a subclass. And again, you can do this by using the ISA test. If you can make a meaningful statement by saying is a, or sometimes is a kind of, then there is an inheritance relationship. So adjunct professor is an example of a professor, or an adjunct professor is a professor. Yeah, that's true, right? A, what were the other examples I gave? A graduate student is a student. All right, an eagle is a bird. So all three of those statements were meaningful, and they made sense, and they're true. Therefore, the first word in the sentence was a the subclass. The second one is a superclass. Now, steering wheel is an automobile. 
No, a steering wheel is not an automobile. An automobile is not a steering wheel. All right? So it doesn't pass the ISA test. So it's not inheritance. Now, again, the composition part is to say that a steering wheel is part of a car, or a steering wheel, or a car is comprised of, a, or contains a steering wheel. All right? That would be an example of composition. All right? Um, finally, faculty and student. Faculty is not a student. Student is not faculty. All right? So it, both of them fail the ISA test. All right. So if we're going to draw these diagrams, it would look something like this. Bird. Eagle. Professor. Adjunct professor. An adjunct professor, if you haven't heard that term before, it simply means a part-time professor. All right, and what was the other one we gave? Uh, a student Okay. So that's a, um, that's sort of our guiding uh, guideline for determining if there's inheritance or not, all right, whether you can say is a. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that a subclass can only have one superclass. But a, su sub uh, a superclass can have many subclasses. So, I could not say an eagle is a bird and also a national symbol. I can't do that. I can't draw and say that. An eagle is an eagle is a bird, right? An eagle is a national symbol. But in Java, I cannot implement this. This is called this, this is called multiple inheritance. And it actually causes, and this will probably become more clear when we cover the details of inheritance. Uh, it causes a lot of problems programming when if you were to try to allow multiple inheritance. So what do you do? Well, you pick what's a more meaningful relationship, especially within the, the project that you're talking about. If, for example, this was a project for a zoo, we would say, well, eagles are, um, are birds, right? Because our problem domain is about animals. And from that perspective, it makes more sense to describe an eagle as a bird than an eagle as a national symbol. If we were doing, let's say, the World Almanac or something, where we were talking about the different countries of the world or World Atlas or something like that, maybe we would then say, well, OK, yes, it is a bird, but it is more meaningfully in this problem area a national symbol. So you would have to decide, all right, you'd have to decide which relationship is more meaningful for the particular problem. And when I'm asked what relationship is more meaningful, it's more or less like, well, what does it have more in common with for the problem that we're trying to solve? All right? When we're saying one thing is a subclass of another thing, we're saying that it has all the characteristics of this plus some additional characteristics, or plus a couple things that are a little bit different. So let's look at between student and graduate student. What are some things that all students would have, whether they were a graduate student or a undergraduate student? OK. They all have a set of classes that they take. I'm going to put the stuff up in common up here, and I'm going to put the stuff that is different down here. Okay. 
The stuff that's only true for graduate students, I'm going to put down here below the line. The stuff that's true for all students, I'm going to put above the line. What's something else that all students have in common? I, bills, okay. Uh, they might have invoices. <laughs> All right, yeah. You, you go, you're taking a course, you might have an invoice for the tuition to go. What is something else that all students have in common? An ID number. Sure. All students have a student ID. Something else. Right. Yeah, there, there'd be sort of a class history and a class schedule. So I'll just put both of these sort of as offshoots of this. What are some things that every student can do? What's, what's, a, what's an activity? And I don't mean like going to a movie or something like that. But what's an action that every student, whether they're a graduate student or an undergrad can do. Okay. That's true. All those things, pardon me? Okay, Let, let's come to those because that's more a line of what I'm thinking in. You're absolutely right when you said extracurricular activities. They could participate in, in, in sports, they could participate, go to movies, other extracurricular activities, that's true. But one of the things that we remember anytime we're considering an object-oriented problem design is relevant to the system that you're trying to do. And within a college, maybe some of those things are important, but maybe not. Access to facilities. Okay, that, that's another good one. But definitely the things that, you, that are, we're saying now would be good examples. The first thing that we said was that any student can enroll in a class. And they can also drop a class. Um, students can have permission to facilities. I think I forgot ID here. Someone said a while ago. Students have ID numbers. So maybe, you know, some students, you know, do you have access to check out a book from the library, for example? You have permissions to do that. Or maybe to, to visit the gym or something like that. All right? Anything else we can think of that all students would have in common? Well, you could probably calculate the GPA of any student. They can probably make a payment. They can probably apply financial aid. And so on down the line. A lot of things that any student would have in common. If we were talking about a residential campus, there might be the dorm room, right? Every, every uh, student might have a dorm room, although I would think a lot of grad students would live off campus, but whatever, all right? Now, what are some things that are different about grad students? Something that's different about a grad student compared to an undergrad. They would already have a degree. They would already have an undergrad degree. And that degree would be the specific degree, the college that it was from, and maybe the year that they obtained it. Now, a regular student might have that too, but a graduate student would definitely have that. All right? What is something else that would be different about a grad student compared to a student? Yes? Uh, a grad student might be already in a job in their career. Okay. That's a possibility. Uh, again, from the perspective of our college, though, I'm not sure that would be relevant. 
again, we'd have to figure out like what the what the problem that we're trying to solve is. So maybe that'd be relevant, maybe not. Um, there would be different courses than what a, an undergraduate student would be taking in less Okay, there could be different courses. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that there is. a method that determines whether a student's allowed to take a course, right? Because courses are restricted for undergrads too, right? But there's a different set of restrictions for them, right? For example, let's imagine that this was a college that had, that had um, graduate and undergraduate, uh, undergraduate and graduate students. If you're an undergraduate and you want to take this class, right? There's a restriction. You have to have taken CISS to uh, 160, right? That's, there's a prerequisite. And even if you're a grad student and you're taking this class, that restriction would apply. But there might be certain grad school classes that you have to be a graduate student to take, all right? So typically at a university, a graduate student can take undergraduate classes, but an undergraduate student can't take graduate classes. So graduate students and students have permissions whether they can take a class or not. However, those permissions are different. There's a different set of criteria. So I'm going to put that in both places. What else is different for a student versus an undergrad student? Or uh, I'm sorry, for a graduate student compared to a regular student? Usually the time it takes to graduate is uh, okay. the number of hours, I suppose. Credit hours required. Both of them have the credit both of them have credit hours that are required to graduate, but there's probably going to be a different way of calculating that for a grad student than for an undergrad. What else? Oh we all the mentions of bills and jobs and all that, the, the tuition. Calculate the tuition. You can calculate the tuition for a undergrad. Um, and you can also do it for a graduate student. Now, when we inherit something, all right, when we inherit one class from another, the subclass gets everything that is defined in the superclass automatically. All right? Now, we can do two things. We can add to the subclass stuff that isn't in the superclass. And we can change things that are defined on the superclass level. So for example, if I were to do this, I might make public class student. And I might have an attribute, string, for the name, integer for the ID, a string for city, string for state. String for zip. Maybe some other things. I would then have some methods, the what are called the accessors and mutators, the sets and gets. Actually, the gets and sets. So I would have a public 
void set name that accept a string argument and set the name of the student. I'd have a get name. That would return the name. And let's say I would have calculate tuition. That did all the math and returned the tuition. Now, when we have a subclass for a class, we get everything that's defined in the superclass for free. We don't have to redefine it. So maybe there is an enroll in a course method. Public void. Enroll in course. that maybe accepts as an argument a course. And it adds a course to the student schedule. When I define a subclass, I don't have to redefine those things unless they're different. I only define in the subclass the differences between the subclass and the superclass. So, when I define my subclass of public class graduate student, first of all, I declare it as a subclass by saying extends, and then I give the superclass name. So extends student. When I do that, everything that I define on the student class is accessible for the grad student. I don't have to do that. So, do I have to say that there is an attribute named name? No, I don't. All right. Do I have to say there is an attribute called ID? No, I don't. Likewise, city, state, and zip. One thing I forgot about this is I'm going to make these all protected. because that means that the subclass can access these. And generally, we want to do that. Maybe sometimes we don't, but in general, we want to, we want to do that. So I don't have to bother defining a name attribute for grad student. Grad student has a name, but that name was defined on the student class. I only have to define the differences between the classes. So the set name method ought to be the same, right? I'm going to give it an argument for the name, and it's going to set the attribute to whatever the argument is. The get name method is the same for grad students, just like it is for undergrad students. It's simply going to return the value of name. However, what is difference? Well, a student, a grad student, already has an undergrad degree. And a grad student has a different method for calculating tuition. We're just going to consider these two things and not worry about these for now. All right, so we're not going to worry about these other methods we add. We're going to keep it simple and only talk about these two things. These two things are the differences between a graduate student and a student. A graduate student has a couple of extra attributes. They have a degree, an undergrad degree. So I'm going to make a protected string 
for the undergrad college. A protected string for the undergrad degree. And finally, a protected string for the undergrad graduation year. Right now, we're going to keep that as a string. We actually would change that uh, to something else. Now, the other thing is there's a difference in how we calculate tuition for a graduate student. So I would have public double calculate tuition. I would define that method and have the new method for calculating a graduate school student's tuition. So the bottom line is we would not have to duplicate all this stuff in the grad student. We only put in the differences, whether those differences be for a method or an attribute. So we put any new attributes that exist for a graduate student and we put in any methods that are either new, so like we'd put a set method for these things, and we can also override a method. When we override a method, what that means, it has the same name as a method in the superclass. But this is a method we use if we call calculate tuition for a grad student. All right, let's do, let's, let's, let's take another example. Let's think if we have sales reps. Let's say we have a company that has sales reps. And there's sales reps. There are junior sales reps. And there are senior sales reps. All right. All sales reps will have an employee ID and a name and the amount of sales that they made in a given period of time. All right? All of them have a base salary. Let's say this is a monthly salary. For sales reps, let's say it is 2000 per month. For a junior sales rep, let's say it is 1500 a month. And for a senior sales rep, let's say it's $2,500 a month. Just making up these numbers, OK? So they all have a base salary, but they all have a different value for their base salary. And lastly, they all have a different way of calculating commission. Let's say a sales rep gets paid 10% commission. A junior sales rep gets paid 7.5% commission. And a senior sales rep gets paid 12.5% if they've sold 10,000 or less and 15% for the amount over $10,000. They also both have a total gross pay for the period of time. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to design a solution to this. We'll probably get so far today, 
and we will get, we'll finish it up on uh, whatever our next time we meet is, Wednesday. Now, one thing I didn't mention, but I'll talk about it now, is one little quirk with this is constructors don't get inherited. Okay? Constructors, that's one of the differences between constructors and other methods. Methods get inherited. So therefore, uh, I'm going to avoid creating constructors in the first pass of the example. We'll go in after we finish this example, we'll talk about constructors and inheritance and we'll fill it in. But don't mistake the fact that I'm not putting constructors in and think that's the way you should do it, all right, always. We're just talking about this particular case because we haven't talked about constructors in details and I don't want to spend the time talking about them. I want to complete this example and then we'll move on to constructors. Okay, so let's go and let's make some of these classes. This could be done a couple different ways. This is the way I'm going to do it. This again we might change next, next week when we talk about something else. But right now I'm going to create three classes. I'm going to create your basic sales rep class. This is going to be the super class. Which is valid, right? Because everyone's a sales rep. Whether you're just a regular sales rep or a junior sales rep or a senior sales rep, you're still a sales rep. All right? You're just a different kind of sales rep. A junior sales rep is a sales rep. All right? A senior sales rep is a sales rep. I'm then going to create two subclasses, one for junior sales rep, and one for senior sales rep. Okay. All right, so let's go into Notepad++. And make these classes. I'm going to start defining the basic sales rep class. Public class sales rep All right What what methods do they all have in common? They or what attributes they all have in common? They all have an employee ID, a name and a sales These I'm going to do methods for. All right. So, protected. Protected is means that this class and its subclasses can access this attribute. So, on the scale of things, you have public, which says everyone can access this attribute, which we're not going to use in this class. Um, with rare, rare, rare exceptions. We have protected, which we're going to probably do from now on because it's like private, but it allows a subclass to access the attributes. And finally, we have private, which only, comes in, only is important if there's inheritance involved. So I'm going to create a protected int for employee ID. I'm going to create a protected string for name. And I'm going to create a protected double for sales. All 
I'm going to now cr create the gets and sets for these. Okay, I'm going to do the corresponding gets. I hope this is largely review. Okay, now I'm going to save this as And what do I want to call it? Sales rep. All right. What is the tuition for sales reps? We said it is 10% of sales. So, public. It's going to return a double. Get commission. I'm going to say return sales amount times 0.10. It's just a nice little shorthand, right? Because I could create a variable as a double and say double result equals sales amount times 1.0. 0.10, all right, and or you just say return 0.10, okay? What is the base salary? Well, we said the base salary. 
which I know could be an attribute, but we probably would do some calculation to determine the base salary. So I'm going to put it as a method. And the base salary we said is 2000 a month. So public double get base salary. is $2,000. Then finally, what's their total salary? Well, their total salary is their base plus the commission. So I can say return get base salary parentheses because we're calling a method plus get commission. All right. As it's getting to be the habit, I'll probably go a little bit long in lecture, giving you more than your money's worth. Put that down verbatim on your course evaluation. Just kidding. All right. Does anyone have questions about this? This is pretty straightforward. I'd expect with, within, say, two weeks of this course that you'd have sort of been able to write this code. All right. We have our attributes, which we make protected instead of private. OK, because there's going to be inheritance coming into play. We have our sets. We have our gets. We have a couple calculations, or three calculations. All right, now we're going to come into play, and we're going to say, what is different about each of these? All right, what is different between a junior sales rep? Actually, I meant to show that. What's different between a junior sales rep and a regular sales rep? The commission and the base. The base salary and the commission is different. Is anything else different? Are there any additional attributes? Is there something about a junior sales rep that we need to know that's an attribute? No. Not that we said. What methods are different? Is the set going to be the same? No. None of the sets will be, this, will, will be different, that is. I said, is it the same? And then I said, no. Is it the same? Yes. It's not going to be different. The gets are the same. And the way they calculate commission is going to be different. And the way that you determine the base salary is going to be different. Is the way that we get the total salary any different? No. We still do the same thing, right? We're going to get a different value for the commission and the base salary, but we still Find out the base salary for that employee, find out the commission, and add them together, and that's what gives us the total salary for a junior sales rep. So I'm going to go here and make a public class, junior sales rep, and I'm going to say it extends sales rep. By virtue of doing that, I don't have to include any code that is the same as the sales rep class. I don't have to include any attributes that are the same or methods that are the same. I only include the different things. And we already identified that there's only a couple things that are different. So I'm going to create a public double get base salary. And this will return 1,500, if I remember right. And public get commission, which is simply returning sales amount times, instead of 
0.075. That's all I need to do to do the junior sales rep because everything else, well, a junior sales rep is a sales rep. So most of the processing is the same. There's only just these couple of differences for junior sales rep as opposed to a, um, a, a senior sales rep. So I'm going to go and save this as Thank you. Okay, so go save this. I'll save it as junior sales rep. Then guess what? My senior sales rep's going to be really pretty much the same idea, except there's going to be different specific values for this. All right. So for example, the sales rep, uh, senior sales rep gets paid $2,500. And the rule for a commission, there's a little formula involved. So I'm going to say, did I say tuition? I meant commission. Serves me right for always doing school examples. Double commission equals zero. I create a variable and I'll say I'll say commission equals point one two five times sales amount if sales amount is above $10,000 and they get paid 15% for everything over the NAT. This is. I did a save as. Okay, so, but I forgot to change the class name. So, if sales amount is greater than 15 no, 10,000. Commission equals, I'm going to write the equation. It's going to be a little bit maybe different than you'd expect. Um, just sort of trust me for now. All right, because they already got paid 12.5% for all of their sales. So they just needed an initial, an additional 2.5% for the amount over 10,000. So commission equals commission plus 0 0.025 times sales amount minus. 10,000. And then I return commission. Okay. Again, the key thing to recognize is I only coded the differences. The only thing difference between these two is the way that you calculate their pay. Everything else is, is essentially the same thing. There's no new attributes. There's no new methods. There's just a different way of calculating the commission and the base salary. Now, I didn't test this. All right? This would be a good exercise for you to test and debug it to see if there's any errors. Maybe I made some typos. If I did, I made them intentionally to give you guys practice reading the error messages. If not, it's because I'm a nice guy and want to make your life easy. So we'll pick up on this on Wednesday, and we'll test it, go thoroughly. Then we'll talk a little bit more about it and how you can do other things with this, including the constructors.